Hello, Intro to Calculus. Um, hope you're doing well. I'm still having major technology difficulties. Um, so the um, the face thing isn't working, which is fine. You don't need to see my face. But anyways, um, I'm going to try to stay enthusiastic. Um, so <laughs> chapter four, we are moving on to section two. Um, and basically, this is taking the stuff that we've been doing about um, finding local maxes and mins um, and learning how to find a global max or min, um, but on a, a particular interval. So, um, for example, um, a global maximum is the largest maximum that exists on a function. Um, and similarly, uh, a global minimum is the lowest possible y value on the function. Um, and oftentimes we restrict um, our maximums and minimums. Like if we're looking for a global max or min, oftentimes we restrict the interval that we're looking at, um, mainly because like if you look at some of these examples, um, this first one here um, doesn't have a global max or a min. Um, so all right, it keeps going on both sides. So if you give me a global max of like a thousand, I could give you one that's larger. So it doesn't, um, in this particular case, there is no global max or min. Same thing with this one. Now there's locals right here and here, but um, no, lo no global, right? The biggest one. Um, and then same thing, so over here with this function, we have a global minimum, right? Because that's the lowest point on the graph, but no global maximum because it keeps going on and on um, off to infinity. So uh, oftentimes if we're interested in a global max and min, we're actually looking on an interval. Okay, so um, by definition, there's like an actual mathematical definition to this, but generally speaking, um, in layman's terms, the global maximum is the largest local max, and similarly, global min is the smallest local minimum. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then inflection point, just a quick refresher, that's where the graph changes concavity. Um, but what we really want to focus on today um, is theorem 4.2, which is the extreme value theorem. And basically what it says is that if f of x is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, so that means like from 2 to 5, or from 7 to 15, or from negative 5 to negative 2, um, you are restricting the area that you're looking at. Um, then f of x has to have uh, a local maximum, I mean, sorry, a global maximum and also a global minimum. Um, because if you, like, look at, for example, this graph, even though the whole graph on a whole doesn't have a global max or min, if I zoom in and let's say I'm looking at a specific interval, maybe like negative one to zero. Um, so this is the interval that I'm looking at, right? I will either have um, a global max or and min inside the interval, or it's going to be at the extremes. So here or here. Right? In which case, um, so this is true here, where the local and the global, oh my god, I keep mixing up my words, the global maximum on this interval is right here, it's at zero, and the global minimum is right here at negative two. So um, what basically what you have to do is if you're looking for a global max or a global min on a particular interval, you have to check to see where the derivative is equal to zero, right? Because then that would be like one of these types of maxes and mins, um, where the derivative is equal to zero, and it changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Um, and then you also have to check the y values of the endpoints of the interval, um, because that is the other location where you could have a global max and a global min. Okay, so if you need to fill in those words. Um, okay, so for example, 
Um, basically, if you are trying to find a global max and min on closed intervals, you want to find the critical points on the interval, so where f prime equals zero. So f prime equals zero. <laughs> um, and then you also want to evaluate the function at the endpoints. You want to find out what the y values are at the endpoints because those are the other places where it's possible that you get a max or a min. Um, so if you're finding global maxes and mins on an open interval, basically from negative infinity to infinity or to infinity and beyond, um, the process is a bit different, right? Because again, like I was saying before, this function doesn't have a global max and min on the open interval because it keeps going on to negative infinity and it keeps going up to positive infinity. So it, it's just kind of a different process. But um, for there's particular types of word problems that um, are really, uh, and like actual real life problems where figuring out a maximum and a minimum is really, really, really helpful, especially on a closed interval. So say, for example, you are trying to figure out um, the, you're, you sell t-shirts and you want to find out the maximum profit you could get um, if you're selling shirts from, uh, you know, like zero dollars to thirty dollars and you want to find the maximum revenue that you could possibly get by selling, you know, however many t-shirts at whatever price. Um, so maximizing and minimizing things, which is also known as optimization, which is the title of this lesson. Um, actually, that's a lie. Not actually, but it is optimization is what we're doing. Um, it's basically looking at how do you get the best bang for your buck uh, <laughs> in, in terms of like a sales situation. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that will either be at the endpoints or somewhere in the middle. So anyways, um, let's try a couple of these examples. So number one, find the global max and min of f of x equals x cubed minus 9x squared minus 48 plus 52 on the following intervals. Okay, negative 5 to 12, negative 5 to 14, and then from negative 5 to infinity. Um, so go ahead, if you kind of understand the concept, um, go ahead and try it first, and then um, I will go through the solutions. Okay, so number one, step one, you want to find the critical values, um, because if there are critical values in the interval, um, it's potential it's a, it's a possibility that those might be your global max and global min. So, I find f prime, which is just 3x squared minus 18x minus 48, set it equal to 0. Um, in this case, I'm going to divide everything by 3, because everything is divisible by 3, and that makes my life nicer. So then I need to factor. So what multiplies to negative 16 and adds to negative 6? Well, that's negative 8 and 2. So this whole thing factors to be 0 equals x minus 8 and x plus 2 which means my critical values are positive 8 and negative 2. Um, and then I want to look at um, what the y values are at those points. Now, this interval, negative 5 to 12, contains both of those. It contains 8, right? 8 is in this interval, and so is negative 2. So I have to test both of, both of them and find out the y values um, at those points. Okay, so um, x equals negative 2 and 8 are my possible critical value, or are my critical val values possible um, global maxes and mins. So I want to find the y value when x is negative 2. So I have to take that negative 2, plug it into my y function, my original function. So negative 2 cubed <clears throat> minus 9 times negative 2 squared minus 48 times negative 2 plus 52. Assuming I did my arithmetic right, I have a negative 8 minus 36 plus 96 plus 52, which is 104. So the y value when x is negative 2 is 104. And so what we're looking for is are there numbers um, on that interval that are higher or lower than that? So we also do the same thing at x equals 8. Okay, so when x equals 8, y equals plug 8 in to the function, uh, negative 396. So that is a point on the graph. So just looking at these two numbers, 104, you would guess, is a um, at least a local 
max, probably. Again, you would have to double check that. Um, but you do because you know you don't know if it's increasing or decreasing um, next to it. Um, so you don't know what this is yet, but it's definitely higher than negative 396. So in terms of a potential global max, this is a potential global max, this is a potential global min, but then you also have to check the endpoints because you could also have higher values at the endpoints or lower values at the endpoints. So what that means is I have to take the endpoints of the interval, right, which are at x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 12, and I have to find out what the y values are at those points as well. So I just take negative 5, plug it into f of x, and take 12, plug it into f of x, and see what I get. So when x is negative 5, y is negative 58, and when x is 12, y is negative 92, um, both of which are not any lower or higher than these two values. So um, just to kind of see this, um, I'm going to pull up a graph for you so that it makes sense um, in terms of the function as well, in terms of the graph. Okay, so if I pull up the graph on Desmos, um, remember we're looking at the interval from negative 5 to positive 12, which is right here. Um, and so on that interval, you see that that first critical point um, at negative 2, that is a local max and also a global max in this particular case because there's nothing higher than it. Um, and then that <clears throat> x equals positive 8, which is here, is a local and also a global minimum because there's nothing below it on this interval. So again, we checked this y value. And then we also checked this y value um, because those are the two endpoints. Um, and so you want to check are those endpoints any higher or lower than the critical points that you found. Um, so in this particular case, there was um, nothing interesting at those endpoints. So um, your global max on that interval is negative 2, and your global min on that interval is at x equals 8. Um, so uh, go ahead and try the next two problems on your own. I'm going to write out the answers, um, but not um, explain them. It's the same exact process. So in part B, we already found the critical values negative 2 and 8, which are already found in A, <clears throat> and they're still in the interval, so that doesn't change. Um, and their y values obviously wouldn't change. And negative 5 is still one of the endpoints, but 14 has changed. And if you plug 14 into the original function, you get y equals 360, which is significantly higher than 104, which is our original global max. Um, so on this interval, the global max is 360 at x equals 14, and the global minimum is still at x equals 8. And here, there's still a global min at x equals 8 of negative 396, but there's no max because the right-hand side goes off to positive infinity. So there's nothing higher than positive infinity. Um, so uh, there's just a couple more examples if you want to try a few more. Again, I'm going to um, give you the solutions so that you can try them, um, but I don't really have enough time to talk through the whole thing. So um, I'll try to write out my steps clearly so you can follow them. Okay, number two, um, use the quotient rule because this is a quotient. Um, to find the derivative, the derivative is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared squared. Um, your denominator will never be negative. Um, this is always going to be positive. Uh, it will never equal 0 either because you're squaring a number. That's always positive. And then you're taking that number and squaring it. So uh, this will never be 0, um, and it will never be negative. So the only time when your derivative will be 0 is if the numerator equals 0. Um, so that's going to happen when 1 minus t squared, which is the numerator, um, is equal to 0. So that's when t is plus or minus 1. And then, um, so you can tell, like, this is the global minimum um, at negative 1, and the global max is at positive 1. And it asks, what's the max and min? So what are the um, y values of that? So just plug 1 into the original function. 1 divided by 1 plus 1 squared is 1 half and g of negative 1 is negative 1 half. So um, your minimum is negative 1 half, your maximum is positive 1 half. So um, again, I'm kind of running out of time. I don't want to super rush through these, so I'm going to leave these blank. Um, but uh, these will be good types of problems to try on your own. 
um, see if you can do these, and then we'll talk more in class. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.